This is Raven and welcome to my channel. Today we will be building a budget gaming PC for only $399. We're going to be using mostly new parts in this build. It's not going to be one of those computers where we take an old office PC and stick a GPU in it. It's also not going to look like an old office PC. And it's also not going to have computer parts in it that are so old they could have come from your grandmother's computer. But, since it only costs $399, there are certain compromises we have to make. However, I put together a computer that pretty much anyone can build. These parts are really easy to get a hold of right now, and I don't feel like there are any big compromises here. You can play pretty much any modern game at 1080p, 60fps fairly easily with this build. I'm confident that you can play at least 99.9% .9 of the games out there at decent settings at 60fps, 1080p resolution with this setup. So I don't feel like I made any big compromises and Certainly no compromises to performance in this price range. I think I did a pretty great job. So let's get into it and look at the parts that I put together for us today. We will start out with the Micro ATX Stinger case with included RGB lighting and fans. It has three RGB fans, a tempered glass side panel, and all that fancy gamery stuff. This is by the company Allied. It is a company that I've only come across twice. At first I bought some fans from them and I was just very surprised at how great quality they were for only nine dollars for two and they're better quality than some really expensive fans I've seen out there. So I went ahead and got this case. Now at the core of today's build we have the 10th generation Core i3, the i3-10100F. Now, why did I go with this? Because it is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU that only cost $80 on Amazon. This is like the cheapest, best CPU you can get right now. Now, it is only an i3, but it is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, and this actually outperforms a lot of the i7s of older generations. It's basically the same kind of CPU because i7s of older generations were four core, eight thread CPUs. So this actually outperforms a lot of i7s and for 80 bucks, this is a steal right now. So there's no point in buying used CPUs really when we can buy a brand new one that performs quite well in gaming. And then to go with the CPU, we have a refurbished in like new condition motherboard by Gigabyte. This is one, I'll zoom in so you can see the model number right there. It is a B460M motherboard. This is one that is pretty much the same as the non-OEM versions, but they built these for some OEMs and ended up not selling them in OEMs, so it's pretty much unused, but comes in a just generic box. And then, for our storage today, we will be using this Silicon Power 512GB NVMe M.2 drive, and this only cost 40 bucks off Newegg. Oh, and I got this refurbished board off Newegg as well. This costs $69, right there. $69. So in today's build, we will be using the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte model by Gigabyte. This is a great card for budget builds right now. One of the main reasons why this is such a great card to choose right now is because it is currently the most popular card and has been for quite some time for gamers. Now what that means, since GPU prices are dropping now and gamers are going to want to upgrade, they're going to want to replace their GTX 1060s with something newer, so you'll be seeing a lot of these start appearing on the market right now. Also, this was a popular card for mining, the 6GB model of the GTX 1060. It was a popular card for mining, and because of that, those miners 
since mining isn't so profitable anymore, are going to be getting rid of these cards. And we've already seen this happen. If you go to eBay, you'll see that the prices of these cards are dropping dramatically. And in the very near future, I think you could get these for way less than I got this one for. I got this for $150. It's in decent shape. It works fine. No issues whatsoever. So I would watch out for these. Now, if you absolutely don't want to buy a used one, a great substitute for this right now is the GTX 1650. The GTX 1650 you can buy brand new for just over just around $200. If you shop around, you can even find it for less than that for about $180. So not too much more than these. And it is new, except it has two gigabytes less VRAM and it is a bit newer. So I would go with this one personally. But if you feel uneasy about using a used card, go with the GTX 1650. For the power supply, we're going to be using a used power supply, but this was used in one of my personal computers. Um, you could get power supplies like this for like uh, 25 bucks off eBay pretty easily. Test them out, make sure they work first. Or you could buy a brand new power supply for between 30 and 40 bucks. That's pretty decent. Just get a reputable brand like EVGA, Cooler Master, Thermaltake, um, Corsair. Those are, those are all pretty reputi reputable brands. And But this particular one is the 600 watt Cooler Master Silent Pro. It is an 80 plus bronze power supply and it is semi-modular, meaning it has the basic cables you know you're going to need, the motherboard power, the CPU power, it has those connected and then if you need extra cables you can simply plug them in for the GPU here and the peripherals here. So we are using a used model but simply because I already have one so there's no point in me buying a new one but you can easily find a new one for pretty cheap. And for the RAM today, we're going to be using ATEC memory. Now you might think ATEC, uh, that seems like a crappy brand, but if you look at it, it's actually just Samsung memory. And Samsung is quite reputable, so I don't feel bad whatsoever using this. I got this memory out of an Acer pre-built, so it barely cost me anything because I parted it out and sold the parts. And this is 2,666 megahertz. If you zoom in right there, you can see 2,666 megahertz. So why are we going with 2,666 megahertz RAM? The reason for that is because the 10th gen i3 cannot support faster memory than that. So there's really no point. How about those fancy heat sinks that they have on RAM? Well, those are really just for looks if you're not overclocking, because this memory, I guarantee you, is not going to get hot enough to require a heat sink. So I think today's build will look decent, but we're not going to waste our money just for looks. There are a lot of people out there that swear by different toolkits, but I have built thousands of computers in my life, I've worked in IT for seven years professionally, but started building PCs as a kid. I just recently started building gaming PCs, mostly before I built ones for different tasks like Photoshop or programming or office PCs for different people that needed them for schoolwork and such, or office work. Or I built them for different businesses, I worked for a dental company for a while, so I just recently got in the gaming PC business. But I've discovered in all my years that I almost always only need one tool to build PCs or repair PCs when it comes to, you know, the basic hardware tools you'd find at a hardware store. And that one tool is a screwdriver that is a Phillips screwdriver. Every once in a while you might need a flathead or a star head if you're working with those proprietary HP systems or Dell systems. But generally all you need is a Phillips screwdriver. Make sure you get one with a magnetic head though, otherwise you'll be dropping a lot of screws 
in your case and those can short out pins and cause a lot of damage so you don't want that so just make sure you go ahead and grab one with a magnetic head that's the way to go another tool you might need if you need to move the standoffs in your case those are those little screwy things that the motherboard screws screw into is a one of these thingies um socket head thing anyway the standoffs go in there and then you can screw them in and the size is 3 sixteenths so we're going to use a 3 sixteenths one of these if we need to screw in any standoffs or unscrew any and move them all right let's get started with the unboxing impresses me about this is check this out they didn't use plastic usually they wrap the case in a plastic bag but this is high quality cloth stuff here it's one important tool I forgot to mention if you have long hair like me and you're building a PC a hair tie is definitely a required tool. You do not want to get your hair caught up in a PC. All right, back to the unboxing now. Not bad for a $45 case. The Allied Stinger. Isn't she beautiful? With that front panel ventilation. Nice. And the lovely logo for all of you Star Trek fans out there. Looks kind of like the Trek logo or a symbol or whatever it's called and you can see it has three RGB fans and then it has one regular exhaust fan it's a three pin with a standard motherboard header and up top we have the front IO a nice big glossy power button very clicky and then we have a reset button and we have an LED button that changes the LEDs up front and the fan LEDs then of course we have the microphone earphone USB 2 and one USB 3 so nothing too fancy the fairly standard stuff and up top we have this magnetic dust filter very impressed the build quality of this so far but we'll see what it's like to build in it in just a minute let us start by installing our power supply and here we have a little baggie filled with screws Now, when you're building computers, you need to pay attention to the fact that there are two different sizes of screws. There's the coarse thread and the fine thread. The fine thread is for most drives and screwing the motherboard in, whereas the coarse thread is for the power supply and usually for the expansion slots. To install the power supply, we just need four of the coarse thread screws. 
So we are going to install our power supply with the fan facing down. So it sucks in a fresh supply of air. You don't want to do this if you're installing a PC on carpet, but again, you should never install a PC on carpet. Don't do that to yourself. So just slide it in there. Make sure the four holes are lined up in the back and just screw it in loosely at first. And you just want to screw it loosely at first. To make sure all of the screws are threaded in. So they all line up right and then you want to tighten them all down. Nice and snug. All right. Now we just have to install the motherboard and decide the best way to route these in. For now I'm just going to wad these up and stick them in here so they don't get in the way. Same with these. I'm going to need a smaller head screwdriver for the M.2 drive screw. Here's a handy tip. If you have a screwdriver that's not magnetic like this one, you can just rub a big magnet against it like this, and then it magnetizes it. So no more annoying screws falling off. Now let's get back to installing that SSD. You really want to make sure you unscrew all of those before removing the side panel.
And here it is after spending some time cable managing it. Cable managing in this case wasn't so bad. And here we have the finished product. I'm keeping that plastic film on it because I'm intending on reselling this. So I'll let whoever purchases that take it off. It has a lot of different light modes you can access by pressing this LED button at the top. I personally don't like RGB, so I would just turn that off. And I think it looks pretty great without the RGB as well. Draws a little less attention to that Intel stock cooler. A lot of people might think that that is a terrible decision to keep the Intel stock cooler, but as we'll soon see in the benchmarks, it doesn't need a better cooler, it's just a waste of money to do anything else other than for appearance's sake. For testing out our new system, we will be using an external SSD. It's a 512 gigabyte SSD with our Steam games on. Just because I don't want to bother installing them on this computer, because that just takes up way too much time. Now, this will make it a little bit slower than loading directly from the M.2 drive, and we'll see some moments of frame drops when we're loading new areas, but other than that, I think it's sufficient for testing, and it's just a way easier way of testing games than having to install them in every new system I build. Make a move, and I'll end you, Wastelander.
Something's still holding the supplies up. Now I can get my gear back. <sighs> Why didn't I pack all my equipment together?
I actually decided to try using this computer instead of my main system to do the video editing on for this video. And I kind of find these LEDs annoying. They're like super bright in an annoying sort of way. The brightness is all around on the rim here, and I just don't like it. You can change it to a lot of different modes. I guess it's pretty cool if you're into that sort of disco vibe from your gaming PC, but you can also turn that off by holding down the button, and I honestly prefer it that way. Now, a few criticisms of this case. It's kind of unfortunate they didn't just continue this mesh all the way up, because you have a fan behind here that is just fighting against this plastic, which is just dumb airflow-wise, and I think it would have looked better if they just continued the mesh all the way up here. They could have still kept the lighting strip here, kept everything the same, and just replaced this with mesh. But they didn't, because laziness, maybe? I don't know.